This is Mags on Media on ENCA. Some brand news in brief now. The ABSA brand is pushing the launch of its new payment Pebble, which the bank claims is a high-tech, easy way to make and receive card payments. In the tough financial services market, uh, brand building these days, we suggest, requires big, bold messaging on the technological front. And Carson Light has introduced a new addition to its extra cold family with a through-the-line campaign highlighting a flavoured variant with a dash of lime. The flavoured beer category, by the way, has seen a 7% growth spurt globally during 2013, and South Africa is no different. Finally this week from the Financial Times, which writes, the world according to Yannick Balor consists of two types of people. Those who, faced with change, hunker down and try to protect what they have. And those who welcome disruption and use it to spot new opportunities. He's the chairman and chief executive officer of Havas, one of the world's largest advertising networks. He was in South Africa just a few days ago and sat down with an exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Magzon Media in which we touched on the tough global advertising market and why Africa is the last big brand frontier. Now, I've just been looking at your Twitter feed, Cameroon, Congo. I'm surprised you can still keep your eyes open. In fact, you seem to have done such a lot of aeroplane traveling. But we have two big groups in South Africa right now, uh, WPP and Publicis. They have massive checkbooks. They're buying up agencies left, right and center. What is your strategy as far as Africa is concerned? When the Bollore Group, which is my family group, which is one of the biggest conglomerate in the world, took over Havas uh, in the middle of the year 2005, uh, our first concern was to get back to growth and to have a healthy financial situation for Havas. Mm. But in 2008-2009, the group was already doing much better and we decided to focus on our global strategy. And we found that uh, Sub-Saharan Africa was not covered except South Africa where we have uh, an agency that employs uh, almost 100 people. Then we have two options how to be present in Africa. First option uh, which is the most convenient, which is the easiest, is to, to, to get uh, agreement with local agencies. Mm. So we don't spend that much money and we have commercial agreements so we can serve our clients. But that's not exactly what we did. What we did since the last four years was to build our own network. So we have started in Cameroon, in Ivory Coast, in Congo and in 13 other countries to build Avas agency. And now we are one of the top players, Pan-African players, uh, with our networks. So for our clients, it's very convenient because we can really manage our people, our talent. So we have to attract great talent. I'm very uh, uh, satisfied with what has been achieved over the last four years, but we still have a lot of ambition. So we will still dedicate some time and some money to invest into Africa. But it's a tough job for you. You're a relatively small group. I think the sixth largest ad holding group uh, in the world. Um, can you really compete with the giants like WPP and Publicis? I think it's the opposite. I think it's an advantage because when we compare our scale, I mean, we have double advantage. First advantage is we are big enough to manage global clients. We manage global clients. Mm. I think it's very hard for independent agency to, to become global. But we have done this uh, journey so far with great success. But in the same time, uh, you have talked about uh, digital and innovation. When you are working in an industry that is facing so much changes, I think it's important in the same time not to be too big. Because when you're too big, you, you get to have too much inertia. So it's very hard to change, it's very hard to move. When you have our scale, you have agility. So that's something we can uh, really play with and I think it's uh, our scale is, is a great advantage. Let's return to that word that you used, innovation. Um, explain to me why this is becoming so much more important in advertising these days and how you inculcate uh, a culture of innovation in an agency group. Globally, I think innovation is not important only to our industry, not only important to advertising industry. I think that in every industry, when a company stops to innovate, it starts to die. This is very obvious in our industry because with the digital, it's changing everything. Now we have the mobile, so people are uh, talking about brands on social networks, they are buying differently. I mean, all the distribution network is completely disrupted. And I think that in the next 10 years, we will see many uh, new revolutions. So every morning, every night, we need to think at how the future will look like. 
to be able to help our clients to adapt. But to it's very new difficult paradigm. to build a strategy around constant disruption, isn't it? It's very difficult, but it's easier when you have our scale. You need to be very open-minded, you need to work a lot to be very curious. But if you start to embrace these changes with enthusiasm, you will win the race at the end of the day. Often clients are resistant to innovation. They're afraid of innovation. They think innovation will cost them money. I know. So it's all very well to have this culture of innovation within your own group, yeah. but how do you make sure that uh, your clients are buying into it? We do, all do, have do you in have mind. the silver bullet there? Yeah, we all have in mind mm. the Kodak example, mm. because Kodak didn't die because of the digital camera, because they have invented the digital camera. But they didn't want to launch it, because they thought it would cannibalize mm. their uh, traditional <coughs> camera. So I think it's very important to explain to our clients that they need to see this innovation as a key factor for change for their consumers. Because at the end of the day, the consumer will, will, will decide. I mean, it's impossible to, to say to, to people what they need to consume. They will decide. So what's very important for us is to help our clients to go to this new generation, to this new generation of consumers, to this new reality. I mean, that's something that is key to us and all our clients are very satisfied with what Havas is bringing to them. I just want to ask you one final question, if I can. I know the key to your agency network's growth strategy has been the integration of yeah. creative and media buying options. In, in years gone past, those two have been very separate. Yeah. Where's the advantage of bringing them together and how difficult has it been to, to integrate those two, uh, those two disciplines? Seeing one change in our industry, bringing by the digital, mm -hmm. uh, where there is no point anymore to... to to cluster, to separate uh, digital and uh, uh, traditional mm. media buying and, and creative. Because just take an example like social media. Is there Havas uh, media people are more relevant to deal with social media or is Havas creative people? I mean, when I meet a client, you just want to talk about communication. I don't mm. see the difference because today, with the digital, I think that the medium, the, the way to address the message is becoming as important as the message itself. So. When we combine people from media, media expert and creative expert, it really brings like a magic potion. It's a secret to do, to enhance the advertising campaign for our clients. So that's, that's what we have called Havas Villages, so people working together. My strategic plan I have presented last year was together. It's already a, a success with a lot of major wins. So I think that bringing people together is key for the future of industry. Yannick Bollore from Havas, thank you very much for joining <laughs> thank us. Thank you very much for having me. The views there of Yannick Bollore from the Havas Group. He was in Johannesburg just a few days ago. And that's this week's programme. As always, thank you for watching and goodbye.